Hey, what's up, guys? This is 3D Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial. Lately, I just fell in love with this granular simulations. I especially like in this one, the swirl movement here. You get this beautiful mixing of the different colors. And I have to admit, I did this one with Nexus from Insidium, their GPU based particle engine. But I want to try with you guys to do something like this one also with the rigid body dynamics in Cinema 4D 2024. So let's try this. All right, just to show you a couple Couple more beautiful frames here so just look at these beautiful angles you can also do some nice close-ups all right and maybe i can also show you these ones this is a render that i want to render overnight but i still thought i can show you some still frames here okay so it's really beautiful and i love insidium nexus but now the challenge for us is to create something like this one also with cinema 4d 2024 with the rigid body dynamics so challenge accepted i can directly tell you from the start that we won't get Get that resolution so i think this one for example comes with 1.5 million particles just to let you know one last thing these two courses I just released on my Patreon where I show you my setup for the Nexus Swirl logo reveal. Okay, but now let's dive into Cinema 4D and try the same thing with rigid bodies in Cinema 4D 2024. All right, guys, finally in Cinema 4D. And this is my scene where I used Insidium's toolkit, especially Nexus. So if you want to learn this one, then as you already know, this is on my Patreon. Okay, two tutorials about it. But now let's dive into Cinema 4D 2024 and let's just try to to replicate that thing okay i know already that this will be difficult because we just can't use the same amount of particles but let's just try how close we can go here so i want to start with a sphere maybe i want to make this one a bit bigger 200 and i want to put this one to hemisphere r to rotate this one around let's do it like this one and I mean, this one could have just a little bit more resolution. Maybe use an even number like 60. Press C to make this editable. T to scale this one down. I just want to have like a little bowl here, something like this one. Now let's see what kind of particle we want to use. Of course, we could use something like a sphere. Let's just go into it. And maybe I could set this one to hexahedron. The particle radius could be 10 or 5. I think this one should be bigger. So I just scale this one up to 150, something like this one. All right, NA to get rid of the lines. Maybe I want to use some colors here. So this is not just gray and gray. So let's just put this gray onto the bowl. All right, and maybe here for this one, we could use a color like, let's see, let's use like this peach color here. That's nice. So I think we want to use like a couple of different colors. So why don't we just duplicate this one and set this one maybe to some yellow, maybe a stronger yellow, something like that. Let's do it one more time. This one could be some bluish tint and one more. And I want to turn this one to maybe something like a purple tint. Okay, something like this one. So now we have this beautiful sphere here. Now let's just double check it and B. I want to see the lines and I think this one could be like 10. Let's put it to eight. I mean, eight is a little bit rough, but maybe just to really optimize it, we could even use like eight segments for this sphere. Let's try it. Let's put this one into a cloner. Let's put it into it. Now we know that our radius is five. So probably I should set this one to 5.1 or something like that. So they don't intersect. Okay, that didn't make any sense. So you put it to 10.1. Okay, that's better. So it's close, but they don't touch. That's great. I also want to already go into simulation, put the rigid body tag on it. Let's just make this one a little bit bigger here and let's see so something that is frustrating some people is that they don't know about this thickness parameter here so this is like a safety margin around all of the particles all of your simulation which is like an invisible wall so when they fall down onto your collider there will still be a margin of 1.5 centimeters between them so yeah it's a little bit unrealistic this is why i just turned this one down to 0.1 for example let's also go to our bow and this one needs of course a collider tag let's put a collider tag on it i already know when i go to points mode to polygon mode and i can see these ones then the normals are facing 
outwards. So that's not so helpful in that case. Right click on it, reverse the normals, that's better. Now this one is set to front, this will work. And now when we simulate this one, we get a quite impressive first rigid body simulation, right? Okay, so this wasn't possible before. Okay, just a stupid joke here. Of course, we can do this one with more particles. So let's put this one to maybe 30 or maybe 40. Let's put it to 50, something like this, for example. And we could use like two particles in the height and maybe even more like three. Okay, I mean, this is not so much. This is like 150, like 450 particles. Okay, that's not much. So we could put this one to four. Now we have 600 particles. And I mean, this is up to you to get more particles into your scene. But for a start, I think that's good enough. But I can already see that the scene scaling, I don't like it so much. So press T to scale this one up. I want to scale this one to, let's say 180. And I think overall, I need to correct myself. I just want to have more particles here. Put this one to 100, okay. Make this one even bigger, I'm sorry. So let's do it like this, okay. So now we have 1,200 particles here and this is good. I think I can even put this one to five. So now this is 1,500 particles. Okay, that's a start. I'll just call this one. Now I go to F2 to top view, NA to see it as shading. And I just want to duplicate this one, move it over here. This one could be our next particle, put this one to yellow. Let's do this once again. And I'm just eyeballing this one. Maybe they can be a little bit closer closer together, okay? So let's do it like this. Let's put this one to blue. And this one could be our purple one. All right, let's move it over here. Let's just see this one for the start, how this one will animate. So let's just see how fast this one is. And let's simulate this one. Okay, you have to wait a little bit in the beginning, but now you get this beautiful movement here. All right, let's just see this one. Okay, it's already a little bit slower. I think what we can tweak here is to to set all of them to multi instance. Let's see the speed now. And yes, this is way faster. So I like this one way more. Let's put this one to 150. We are losing one particle, but hey, okay, you are an outlier. I don't care. It's okay. So let's see. We want to have like a swirl motion here. So go to simulate forces and you could use something like a rotation force. All right, we have a rotation. I think it always rotates around the Z axis. So hopefully I'm not wrong, but when I rotate this one 90 degrees, then this one should be better. Let's just double check this one. If we get some rotation here, we can't see anything. So put this one to 100 and there you go. You already get a little bit of rotation or quite a good rotation, I would say. Put this one to 150. And I think we can just make this a little bit more clever when we put a cylinder force into it. The cylinder force shouldn't be rotated like this one, the field, but let's do it like this. Put it to 300 in the height and put this one to 300 also, or even to 400, all right? And this will just gradually change the strength of this force depending on where it is inside of this field. So we have like an inner offset. Inside of this inner cylinder, you get the full amount of the force and then gradually it will go down to zero here okay let's just see how this one will look i just want to have a bit more variation here all right so you can see the force is stronger here all right i mean yeah definitely we get something here okay so yeah it's interesting so i just duplicated these cloners and now i have like of them. Each of them comes with around about 10,000 particles. So now we have 100,000 particles and let's just see how fast this one is. Okay, probably this will take a little bit until it starts to calculate. Let's just see. All right, it's starting and you can see that the speed is slow, but I think it's still quite okay. So it's not that bad for this amount of a real rigid body simulation. So this is something else 
that a particle simulation like you do with Insidium, but this one is real rigid body simulation. So that is some impressive speed, I have to say. But now, because this is still too slow for the tutorial, I would say I will just cache this one. And I can already see that I don't like how I restricted the rotation here. So I would put this one to 800 and put the strength of it maybe to 250. We could also, in addition, put in some turbulence. Of course, you have to test this one before before you do a huge simulation like this one but just I'm just guessing some numbers here so I will just put this one to 10 and 50. All right you know what before we cash it I think it is safer to just test your forces with one emitter active. So I want to see the pattern the turbulence is giving me. So let's play this one back and yeah, we get like a little bit turbulence here. The rotation is quite strong. So yeah, this one is intensive and you just have to balance this one out here in this YouTube tutorial. I won't dial the numbers in exactly because this will just take a little bit of time. But you basically have to balance out the rotation, the turbulence. And actually we are missing one ingredient here, which will be an attraction force. Because when you use a rotation, then it can easily happen that all of your particles will just fly to the outer border here or even jump over it. So if you want to prevent this from happening, then you can counterbalance the inertia which the particles get through the rotation with an attraction towards the center. So you just have to balance out these forces and I want to try what will happen when I put an attraction here. You can also restrict it with a cylinder field for example or you could do something like a spherical field. Let's make this one bigger, put this one to 300 for example. But then I think I want to invert this one. So everywhere there will be an attraction here but then as it will get closer to the center there will be no more attraction. So this just makes more sense to prevent something like a black hole effect where where everything will dive into the center. So I think it's better when you invert this power here. And just to see this one better, I want to put this one to one. Okay, and let's just see what kind of simulation we will get now. You can see that we get some noise. I think the turbulence could be set up higher. So I want to put the scale to 100 to get a bigger noise pattern here. But let's just see this one more time. So we get the rotation, we get some noise pattern here and hopefully also the attraction will help us so that we don't lose too many particles which will fly outwards. Okay, so it seems like the attraction could be just a bit stronger. I would put this one to 20. But as I mentioned, this will just take a little bit of time to counterbalance to match the exact balance between the forces and I would say that this one could be nice so just because I don't want to make this tutorial too long I want to just test it with this setup but one last thing that I want to do here is to select this one press D to just scale this out a little bit and now I want to move this one up I just want to restrict my particles from falling out of my shell here. You could also press UL to select this one, UP to cut it away from the previous geo. You just have to go over there, kill it here. Now you have a separate element there, which you could make invisible if it is annoying you. All right, so now I just want to put this one back to 10. Let's activate all of them. And I think I just want to cache this one and let's see how this one will look, all right? so. Just go over to one of your rigid bodies and I want to probably cache 150 frames. All right, so the caching took like one or two minutes and just to not tell anything wrong, let's just double check this one. So this one has like 80 times 120, this is 9,600 particles. And when we multiply this one with 10 emitters, then this is 96,000 particles, let's say around about 100,000 particles. Just to compare this one, I think my simulation here with Nexus, this one comes with, I think like 1.5 million particles. Okay, so yeah, this one has more particles, but now this one with a caching time of one or two minutes has 100,000 particles and already you can see some beautiful swirling motion. Okay, <laughs> there is something wrong here. All right, so I just put this letter behind it. Like let's pretend like this is a logo and it should actually collide with it. So I did something wrong. Of course, you have to go to your logo, put a collider tag also on this one and then you will get some beautiful collisions here. 
here. So, so let me just quickly recache this one. And maybe because we just want to see a little bit more particles. Right now with a caching time of one or two minutes, we have 100,000 particles. So let's just push this a little bit further. I would say we just go to this cloner here and let's just go into it. I think the sphere should be and then just half the size. Let's put this one to 2.5. Five, or you know what let's not overdo it i want to put this one to three for example i don't want to wait too long but let's put this one to three for example therefore now we can reduce this one to 6.1 so now they should be just a little bit more densely packed here and now we could for example put this one to 150 or 200 let's do it like this all right, and let's just do the same thing for all of the other emitters. So now you can see that I changed all of these ones to 10 by 10 by 200. That should be 20,000 per emitter. We have 20,000 times 10. So if my math isn't wrong, this should be 200,000 particles. Yeah, let's just cache this one. So hopefully Cinema 4D won't crash and the caching time won't be too long. So let's just test this one. Let's just click on cache scene. All right, and the caching took around about five minutes for this amount of particles, okay? So let's just see what we get here. You get some beautiful viewport playback and you can see we get some nice mixing here. I can see another error that I did, okay? So I just pause this for a second. I think you can see that most of the twirl of the swirl movement is happening here, okay? The center part here is more or less not that impacted by the swirl movement. And I think this is just because in the cylinder field for the rotation, where we change the power of it, we get the gradual change from here to there. But inside of this inner cylinder, the power more or less is the same. So if you want to get an even more interesting result, I think you should change the inner offset you can also see it here in this visual visualization that you get some change here but there it's more or less flat with the same force and this is what you also can see here so if you want to see something that is more gradual you could put this one to zero and then hopefully you will get an even more interesting swirl movement therefore i want to put this one to 250 but let's just keep on watching this result here you can see we get the beautiful movement the logo is coming up and then of course in the end you could for example slowly go down with the strength of your effectors here but overall we have all of the ingredients here that we also had in the insidium nexus result just in a little bit of a lower resolution here but overall i would say that we got pretty close also with the rigid bodies in 2024 and here is the comparison what I did with Insidium Nexus. So if you want to get this set up and you just want to do a higher res simulation here with Nexus, then just be sure to check out my Patreon. On my Patreon, there's also some cool stuff about rigid bodies, soft bodies, all of the good stuff actually. So if you want to support me, check out my Patreon. But other than that, thank you so much for your time. See you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.